What's up, old school stereo fans? This is Big D from OldSchoolStereo.com. Today we're going to talk about how to test the maximum output from your amplifier. What we have here, first we're going to start with the resistor load. They call it the dummy load. And as you can see, I have it uh, labeled here. Each of these resistors is 50 watts at 8 ohms, and I have parallel series configuration set up so that we have uh, four separate 200 watt loads at 8 ohms. Now for car stereo testing, I bridge two of the 8 ohm loads into four ohm loads. That gives me 400 watts at four ohms. And then when I want to do two ohm load testings, I can actually parallel um, the two loads together and give me 800 watts at two ohms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to verify that we have four ohms for each channel. What I'm going to show you first is a multimeter and what we have here is a high quality $5 Harbor Freight Special Syntec model but actually it works fine. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to short the two leads together and show you that there's actually some resistance in the leads themselves. And if I remember right, it's somewhere between 0.5 and 0.4 ohms. As you can see, it's creeping its way down. So we'll take that into consideration when we're measuring uh, the ohm loads. There we go, 0.4. So what I'll do now is I'll measure one of the banks, which these are uh, paralleled together. These two are parallel together. The two 8 ohms are parallel together. As you can see, we have 4.5, which taking the factor of the resistance of the wires out is 4 ohms. We'll test the other channel as well. And once it calms down, as you can see, it's right at 4.5. So that's right at exactly 4 ohms, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need in order to complete our testing is gonna be a uh, oscilloscope and a true RMS voltmeter. Now, it just so happens that this particular model, the Valemon HPS50, um, is both of those. It has an oscilloscope and a built-in RMS meter as well. So, this serves dual purposes, which saves money. This unit itself was about $200 plus shipping. Um, you can look online at different places. Some places it's considerably more than that. I bought mine from kitsusa.net. The other thing about the Valeamon HPS series, including the 10, uh, the 40, and the 50, there may be some other models as well, is this has an actual built-in audio test, which it can does the calculations for you to give you, um, as you can see, RMS watts, peak watts, or uh, AC plus DC. We don't use that one. The test that I use for my amplifier test is number 13, which is the AC RMS watts. And as you can see where it's pointing to number 13 there, and I'll show you on the screen here shortly. Okay, I'll power up the meter here so you can see and I'll show you, press this button here, and you can see probably the same screen that I just showed you from the manual. And right now I have it set to four ohms and I have it set to RMS watts. And you can use the uh, over arrow, I'll back it up, let's go back. As you can see, I'll use the over arrow, it goes to eight, 16, 32, or two. So for my test today, I'm gonna use four ohms and to go back, I just hit the display and it takes me back to the main menu. Now I may do another video uh, giving some more details about the specific meter here, but for today, I'm just gonna show you how I complete my test. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention, which is very important for doing audio tests, is make sure, if I can get you to see it here, that you have the probe set in the 10X position there's a switch for 1x and 10x 
you want to make sure that you're in the 10x position there's actually a calibration method on how to make sure you've got it calibrated and there again I'm, I may go over that in another video or you can read it in the manual so all we do to get the um, get the oscilloscope hook up, hooked up is we take the negative lead and I'll clamp it onto the negative set of wires and actually these binding posts work pretty well I can just sit the probe down and the positive lead will actually touch the wire there and I can kind of hold it in place as I'm doing my tests, as you'll see. So the other item that we'll need in order to complete the audio test is a source with some uh, test tones. And what we have here today is I have several test tones, as you can see, 30 hertz, 45, 70, 100, and 1000. I'll probably only use just a few of those, but it's good to have them just in case. And I'm using this iPod Nano first generation. And it will be connected through this 8th inch connector, which is connected to the uh, RCA splitter there. So we can go from, uh, sorry, focus we can go from 8th inch to RCA and that's what we'll do for our test. And to feed the amplifiers for the test I'm going to use this Audio Authority uh, Model 978 100 amp power supply and uh, this will ensure for the majority of my tests I have plenty of juice and it's 13.8 volts DC uh, which simulates the car audio environment. Okay, as you can see here on the screen, we have it set to the run position. I also have the auto button push, so it's going to uh, set the waveform for me automatically as I crank the volume up. And pause it. I have the um, test tone set at 70 hertz. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and play it, and let's see what the maximum output power is. And the auto adjusting feature is adjusting automatically. See, we're up to 42, 46, 49. There we see some peaking. So I'm going to back it down just a little bit. A little bit more. Right there, 52.20. We have no clipping of the waveform. That is the RMS output at 4 ohms stereo for the Punch 40i DSM that I currently have. Now let's try it bridged. Okay, now we have the Punch 40 IDSM bridged um, using the correct method by Rockford, which is the left positive and the right negative channel. And I'm bridging it to a 4 ohm load, which is one of the resistor loads here. Um, that's actually eight of the resistors together. So we'll see how this outputs at 4 ohms bridged. Okay, here we go. Let's run the test at 4 ohm bridged. It's like 157.0. If I try to turn up any more, I start clipping the waveform. See it clipped at the top there? So maybe 148.9. Looks like that's about the best we're going to get at 4 ohms bridged. Okay, now what I've done is I have uh, bridged all of the resistors in parallel, all the positives and all the negatives in parallel. As you can see, this one is bridged to the other side. That's going to give us a 2 ohm load. And unfortunately, I don't have enough resistors to do two channels at 2 ohms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just the uh, left channel on the amplifier at 2 ohms, and let's see how it puts out. So, And the other thing I'm going to have to do is change the mode on the... Uh, Valaymon oscilloscope and I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, I'm going to need to change the mode here so I'm going to press this button, press the over arrow and go back to 2 ohms and then hit the display and there we go. We're running at 2 ohms. Now let's see what she'll output. Okay, hard clip in there as you can see it's better. Uh, looks like we got 80.51 and still no clipping. Close to clipping. 84.63, I see some clipping. So let's go with the 80.51. Actually, 82.56. OK, 
Okay, I flipped the amplifier over just so you can see which model we're dealing with here. Again, I said it's the Rockford Fosgate Punch 40i DSM series, um, approximately the year 1993 or 1994. So there you have it, old school fans. We like to test your own amplifiers and find out what the maximum output power is. Well, first off, you need a dummy load set of resistors. Yes, you can use a speaker, but um, I highly recommend getting one of these because it takes all the sound out and you don't have to worry about hurting your ears. The next thing you'll need is an oscilloscope with a built-in RMS meter or a separate RMS meter for measuring the AC volts. This one happens to do it all for us, which is very nice. Check out the Valaimon HPS 10, HPS 40, or HPS 50. There may be some newer models out there by the time you're watching this. And we just need speaker wires to hook it up to our amplifier. We need a source, which in this case is an iPod Nano going into the RCA jacks. And yes, that does supply enough um, input for me. I've tested it with the four volt out on my Alpine head unit as well. And I get the same result. So it's just easier for me to use the um, the iPod. So old school fans, there you go. There's a demo on how to measure output wattage from your amplifier. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon where we'll show massive output power from old school amplifiers. It's going to be exciting, thrilling, can't wait. Stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. See ya.